a fantasy face-off and a wheel of shame. You do not want to miss a ton of matchups on today's show. All the latest injury news to get you ready for week 14 of fantasy football. And yeah, it's Friday. Subscribe right there. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Friday episode of the Fantasy Footballers, Jason Moore, Mike Wright, Andy Holloway. All right. Yeah, (laughs) baby. Hey, we got a half. They hit the over. Yeah. In the first yeah, half. We did it, everyone. Then and they then slowed it, down. It seemed like 31 points was going to be like the final score or the final total once I bet on the under. Yeah. But then. Yeah, you doubted Mitchell Trubisky. You two were insufferable <laughs> once, yeah, we, <laughs> once again with your, your backed into Mitch fandom oh, for the weekend. baby, I You're, never had a doubt. Did you have any doubt, Mike? Oh no! Like, I mean, like after, nobody beats Mitch. Like after he threw that first pick, mm-hmm. it's like not a problem. Just you then, wait. Then should have thrown the second one. The entire arena has turned on Mitchell Trubisky. Like there's there's no way they're gonna bench him. He's gonna come through with some some serious points for sure. Oh yeah. Just I was cool, calm, collected, yeah. knowing yeah. that he's going to turn it around, I wasn't, get the rushing yards. I wasn't doing the math of, like, if we get point two points from the quarterback, can we still win? <laughs> wasn't doing that at all. Because he had a great game. Yeah, he did. Woo! They lost. Who cares? Oh, yeah, no. We, <laughs> we won. Yeah, come on. <laughs> we won the night. Well, look, our, um, our first entry in the Will Zeke be a league winner contest was a – a winner. I mean, we had yeah, we had seventy two receiving yards on seven receptions, twenty two carries. Goodness gracious! This I, is the preview of the rest of the Patriots season. I saw someone point out, and I, I apologize for not knowing uh, who it is on Twitter right now, but that, that Zeke scored more points in that game than Tony Pollard has in any game this season. Wow! Yeah, and um, seven for seventy two through the air. Well, that'll help. And yeah. then we have Hero. Hunter Henry with two touchdowns in the game. Scotty Fish uh, oh, that was, tight was, end that we had. It was Ryan McDowell, Jason. Oh, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Love that guy. Shout out so, to him. So, uh, you know, we had a football game. It hit the over. If you played Najee Harris, Yay. that was uh, nausea-inducing. Yeah. And then worse than that or close to it, Jalen Warren, seven for 11. Mm. Grody. Not good. Grody to the max. So that was last night's game. We have a whole bunch of matchups to talk about today. We've got NFL news to cover. We'll find out if Eckler loses his job by the end of the show, officially or not. I hope he's in your DraftKings lineup, guys. <laughs> I really hope he is. Yeah, yeah, he's he's in there. Yep. He's not. Yeah. No, he's not a mighty. He's not. I think Sorry. he'll be zero percent rostered across DraftKings. Well, we do have that today too. The fantasy face off with the Mike Wright, the fantasy yeah. hitman trademark wheel of shame. I'm pulling the turkey. Now you don't have a hoodie on. Is he wearing the right amount of clothing for no, what you I expect was, to happen later? I don't know what's happening, but I was told don't wear a hoodie, so I wore a jacket that so you could remove that it. You could yeah. take off. Yeah, yeah, smart. I don't know what's happening either, so I'm really looking forward. I to hope it. it works because we found out this morning there's. There's a little bit of trouble What's with, the, <laughs> with the couldn't clear customs in time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is the? I mean, I lived your life last year, right? Of, yeah. of the consecutive, how is that? How is your psyche right now? Uh it made it all right. the The lineup last week was it was okay. It just Sam Howell, Terry McLaurin. Sam, no, you're not no, even blaming. No, the zero. no, I told you, I will never ever blame Terry McLaurin ever. Does that mean I don't have to blame John Dotson? No, he, oh, this, this is yeah. not, no, the season is not Dotson's fault. Okay, wait, Sam wait, wait. Howell is selfish. Wait, wait, okay, so just to be clear, yeah, yeah, we yeah. are going to put the blame, yes, mm-hmm. on the second leading yardage, uh, yes, yeah. thrower in the league yeah. right yeah, now. Yeah, you're yeah. darn right. We it's are Sam Howell's fault for throwing too much to 
Yeah. Everyone. Well, okay. I okay. mean, Mike. I just needed clarity. Let, I, it sounds is, nonsensical, but Mike really made a compelling argument. Yeah. Is he winning? No. Yeah. Cool. Great yards, bro. <laughs> But so he would be winning if the yards yeah, were because he would have touchdowns. Uh, yeah, if you threw it to the other guys, imagine the yards. Yeah, these he, are he could be the leading. These passer. are Logan Thomas, Curtis Samuel, <laughs> Diami Brown yards, Jason. Yeah. yeah, no, I do get that. Those are would... grody, as you would say. <laughs> um, man, lots going on. It is Friday. Foot Clan Friday. Well, every Friday we give a $100 gift card away. Today's winner is The Reality Is. That is the handle. The underscore. Reality underscore is. Is what? That is what we'll find oh, out. Oh, man. Someday. So who's on first yeah. situation? I really feel like I deserve a busted there. I didn't even want to say the joke. Busted. Thank you, Mike. You're welcome. Uh, $100 to, f- <laughs> to <laughs> fantasychamps.com. Congratulations. Thank you for supporting the show. The underscore reality underscore is over on Patreon. Thank you very much. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league presented by USAA insurance. The reality is Jason is that I had no qualms about starting Hunter Henry for our Scotty fish. Team. Oh, I just yeah, knew, man. I knew that. Is that all we started in our combined team was just Hunter Henry? Well, no, Zeke as well. Oh, Oh, yeah. fantastic. Because yeah, we are, we know what's going on yeah. with New England. Yeah. Don't check our rankings. <laughs> Don't check our rankings. Um, Amari Cooper did not practice again on Thursday due to the concussion. But yeah, I mean, this is going to be, he's not playing. Derek Carr remained limited on Thursday, dealing with the concussion as well. And ribs and a shoulder. <laughs> yeah, ribs, shoulder, concussion. And toes. Taysom Hill didn't practice again on Thursday. Foot, left hand. Okay. His Chris. foot is a left hand? <laughs> that, That's like, a huge problem. I think we figured out the problem. <laughs> yeah, they're going to need to sit him this week. <laughs> You're so stupid. I'm so stupid. Dude, I'm in such You're a in silly mood this morning. Yeah, what is, uh, I don't know. It's Friday. Oh, what? no, no. Come on. Yes. Come on. <laughs> Al. Thank you, Al. You got it. You, you feel me. <laughs> Goodness. You feel me. Why don't you put that on my board for me? <laughs> no, no, you shall not. Yeah, yeah, I'm your boss too. Go. Chris Olave did not practice on Thursday. Did due, the Saints practice due to illness? Yeah, I mean, what's going on? You got illnesses. You got feet that are hands. You got uh, Lamar Jackson did not practice due to illness. There's a lot of illness going around. Yeah, to be yeah, fair, he, he should be fine by Sunday. What about this guy? Brees Hall didn't practice. Oh, this one is Again. something you have to monitor. If you don't practice Wednesday and Thursday, he, he had limited uh, practice last week, still played. Um, poorly. Played poor. Well, to be fair, it's he's been playing poorly for quite a while. Um, you just have to monitor it. If you're the Brees Hall manager that needs a start, pick up Dalvin Cook. I know it sounds gross, but if Brees is out of the way, Dalvin Cook's going to get a lot of work. We just saw what happened with Zeke. I will add uh, – we did get an update. Brees Hall will be limited today. And yesterday, th- someone had asked. It was Brees Hall saying, I'm going to play. but Seems like he'll be know, out there. Players are always optimistic about playing. Well, generally, they're optimistic. I, what would be better? No, Brees Hall uh, playing and you putting him in or him sitting and playing Dalvin Cook? Because I feel like Dalvin Cook would be a better fantasy asset. I don't. N- neither are very yeah. good. Neither are good. I mean, the, is honestly, the worst is probably what's going to happen. Yeah. Which is Brees will play and share time with Dalvin Cook. That's right. He will be in my lineup. Why don't you put them both in, like the old uh, the Singletary Damian Pierce strategy? When I think how many Jets can I get on the field, <laughs> I'm trying to I'm trying to smash them in yeah. my lineup. That's a, that's good advice, Andy. Thank yes, you. yes. Um, Doug Peterson says Trevor Lawrence is feeling good. Will probably be a game time decision. So, you know, that's from the horse's mouth. Ian Rappaport was saying he still has quote has a lot to prove um, before he's I, cleared to play. I said it in the beginning of the week. I think he's going to play football this week. Is he going to play football well? That I, is his plant leg I, against the Browns um, on the road. No. In but poor it's, weather. But we we did bring it up. Like, if he's the starter, then you, you think differently about Zay Jones and Calvin Ridley. Yeah, that's the that's, implication yeah, there. Like, I'm not playing – and, and honestly, I th- I would prefer in this matchup to not really play those guys, no matter who the quarterback is. The the one that I want to play is the Browns DST, 
So it's yeah. like I'm actually kind of rooting for Trevor Lawrence to heal up for a week and let the Browns DST score a couple touchdowns. And some news based on the starts of the week yesterday, but Dalton Schultz downgraded, did not practice after was he was limited on Wednesday. And so uh, at this point, Brevin Almighty <laughs> in your lineup. I like it. Yeah. I like it. If Brevin he comes Jordan, through. baby. So, hold on. It's a Bruce Almighty joke? Yeah. Okay. Well, no, it's an Evan. Isn't there an Evan Almighty? Oh, there is. Yeah, yeah that's why it's Brevin Almighty. Yeah, I'm not an idiot, Mike. Oh, I apologize. <laughs> I, who could forget the, the Smash follow-up sequel? Evan Almighty. Evan Almighty. You got it. Start with Steve, Steve Carell. Carell. Yeah. That is right. That is the. He is the sequel to Schultz. <laughs> it's perfect. It is perfect. Yeah. Brevin Almighty. Brevin Almighty. It and rolls done. off the tongue. And it's if you done. combine Bruce and Evan. There you go. Yeah. I'm, I'm, adding, yeah, this it, is I'm adding it to the website. Like, Mike, are you, are you this this joke is great. Thank you. In I just it was it was so yeah. high level, I couldn't even you couldn't reach. I you couldn't, couldn't see, see up there. You needed a ladder <laughs> yeah. from us. Goodness gracious. All right. Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet both returned to limited practices. Were you trying to hit the Friday no. button? Yeah, but I was too <laughs> slow. I missed I missed I didn't remember that it was on my board. That was a perfect moment. Al, the it. chances of you losing your job go up significantly <laughs> with this power. Mm. People will unsubscribe. Isaiah Pacheco. Al, I'm getting your job toast today. <laughs> did not practice again on Thursday. Yeah, okay. Rut row. Yeah, you gotta really pay attention. Um Clyde Edwards Alaire, Jarek McKinnon. I know Jarek McKinnon has missed some games being hurt. He's been doing limited practices though. So, it, and then there was a quote from the chief saying, "We, you know, we've kind of been managing Jarek McKinnon. So, if Pacheco misses, I think you know both are dart throw plays that that may come through. I do wonder in in a matchup against Buffalo with a team that could score on you, high over under, good game environment. If Pacheco doesn't go, players like Rushy Rice." It might be more important because, you know, part of the problem with the, the Chiefs receivers isn't just that there isn't one guy getting all the work. It's that the defense has been great and that their running game has been really good. Like Pacheco's been uh, yeah. getting a ton of work. And so I think the play is McKinnon. That's what I was going to ask. Is it Clyde or McKinnon? It's McKinnon. Okay. Full practice. Ready to rumble. Um, any other news that we need to talk about? Are you expecting Walker or Charbonnet to be out there? I uh, I mean, I guess if you're limited on Thursday, that's a positive sign. It's a terrible decision to have to make between the two of them. Okay. I mean, if if they're both active, I think it's you've got to believe Go it's Walker. Kenneth Walker. Yeah. yeah. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. Yesterday on the show, we covered the Buccaneers, Falcons, Lions, Bears, Colts, Bengals, Jags, Browns, Panthers, Saints, Texans, Jets, Rams, Ravens. I threw a lot of matchups yesterday. Mm -hmm. Probably because I stopped paying attention to the clock and we just kept going. Uh, today we have the first matchup we'll talk about, the Minnesota Vikings 6-6 six and six, taking on the 5-7 and seven Las Vegas Raiders. Raiders are at home, the DraftKings Sportsbook line, Minnesota minus three, the over-under. Uh, this week, yeah. delicious 40. Oh, yeah. yeah. It is ironic. In Tasty. the beginning of the season, good weather across the nation. Like, 40 is like, ah, darn it. Yeah. This game's only 40. This this week, it's like, that starts with a four? <laughs> Heck yeah, man. So, we had the Vikings. They started one and four. They won five in a row. Then they lost their last two, and we know that Dobbs is going to start. He has been embarrassing the last two games. Five interceptions, four sacks, three fumbles. And two turtle doves. Yeah, I was going to say, he's, like, <laughs> he's so close to being benched. And that's why all of the start set decisions related to Dobbs, I'm not taking that chance this week. No, you, at cannot, all. you cannot start Dobbs. Even even if he ends up with a good game because of his rushing ability and Justin Jefferson is there, you cannot start Dobbs because there is an equal chance that he ends up with a negative fantasy day. Like, not... Not bad. An actual negative. If he comes out and, and turns the ball over early and ends up with negative fantasy points, he's getting benched at that point. They've already looked at like it's just about not turning the ball over and they have options to pivot off of. So it, 
Dobbs's range of outcomes is wide, but I cannot imagine even in two quarterback leagues that I would want to start him over most other QB twos and two and a halves. Yeah, I mean uh, Zeke Madison. That was a decision for people. Hopefully, you win hope, Zeke. Hope you win Zeke. Yeah, Madison has double digit fantasy points one time in the last seven games. You yep. know Ty Chandler's going to be involved. Yep, been very disappointing. And uh, you know the matchup's very good against the Raiders, but it is it's tough to really predict the success of this Minnesota offense right now. Jefferson is returning, which throws into question your Jordan Addison situation. Yeah, it, it really does. Jordan Addison takes the biggest hit for me. Um, he's going to the bench in most of the leagues where I have him. Um, if there's a middling option, I'll usually be throwing him ahead. Now, the weather makes it a little bit nicer that this one you don't, you're not concerned with. Um, but Justin Jefferson is the one, and Hawkinson will still get his tight end looks. So I think Jordan Addison takes a, a massive hit. You agree, Mike? Yep, I do. Madison or Zach Charbonnet against the 49ers if he was healthy? You just play Madison? I think I go Madison that one. The other question is A.J. Dillon against the Giants or Madison. Currently, I have that decision in my in our Dynasty League. I have A.J. Dillon in right now. Now, uh, Aaron Jones returned to a, a limited practice yesterday. I, th I think it was limited. So that could change things of uh, how you feel about your confidence in playing A.J. Dillon. Because if Aaron Jones is back, then Dillon's workload, while I still think he will get more than Aaron Jones as Jones re re recovers, it's it's a much harder decision to play Dillon, who's in a great spot. But as of right now, I'm going Dillon over Madison. Josh Jacobs, Devontae Adams are both in your lineup, right? Yeah. The Is Michael Mayer in contention as, as a player, you know, post by that has a chance to help fantasy rosters you know would you play eh. like a michael mayer over the otten parham no, I, no. I, I don't think so he hasn't done enough on the course of the season to believe that this is the week i i think he's got a bright future i think he'll be a great player but as a rookie tight end taking the normal not 2023 approach to rookie tight ends a matchup that on the course of the season is top five schedule adjusted against tight ends. This isn't the place. And you have Aiden O'Connell has, you know, since he, well, we got week nine through 12, so a month of time, 220 yards and less than a touchdown a game. And with Devontae Adams and, ja and Jacoby Myers is, you know, getting worked in as well. I, I don't have the confidence right now for Mayer. Seattle, six and six. Get the they get the privilege of going and playing the super on fire San Francisco 49ers who are nine and three, eleven point home favorites on the DraftKings Sports book. The over under forty seven. Um San Francisco is just playing borderline perfect football right now. Mm -hmm. Uh the health of their stars currently in a good place. McCaffrey, Debo, Ayuk, Kittle. All four of those guys, no question marks, right? Correct. No, no question marks. At uh, I mean, all. It, with Pro Purdy, so you play everybody on San Francisco. Yeah, there. If if there's a normal player that you play, you <laughs> you you push them in your lineup. Uh, we just saw this matchup two weeks ago. This was a matchup in C Seattle where the Niners went in there and beat them down. Uh, Seattle did pretty much nothing offensively, and the uh, 49ers did whatever they want offensively. Now it's a home game for them. They're on fire. I mean, maybe you could argue like, oh, it's a trap. It's a letdown after such a big matchup uh, against Philly where they dominated. Maybe, you know, maybe they, they come in unprepared. But this is a divisional matchup. This is an important, you know, San Francisco's now in the running to, to secure the, the number one seed. I don't think there's a letdown here or a trap. I, I believe the, the 49ers take care of business in a serious way. I think it's worth a, a small moment to just talk about George Kittle because you've had seven of ten weeks inside the top ten at the position. Um, you have – what I've seen when I watch these games with George Kittle is that you have kind of a, a defensive breakdown moment every game where Kittle benefits. And I'm looking at the box uh, – or the game log, and I'm looking, you know, the long, right? His longest reception, 38, 28, 34, 66, 24, 32. Like there's – one play a game where the defense gets so overwhelmed trying to keep their eyes on everybody else that Kittle 
slips free, well-designed plays. Yeah, I watched a, a video breakdown from Emmanuel Acho talking about how Kyle Shanahan draws these things up that he, he, with the pre-snap, post-snap motion where George Kittle just every time is left accidentally forgotten. Well, yeah, and there's like fake blocks. You know, like mm -hmm. Kittle will look like he's blocking and then the defense is in man and they follow him, their, def their offensive players down the field and Kittle just runs wild with the hair flying behind him. His, yeah. I mean, he's really been great. He has. It, his last bad game, though, was Seattle. Yeah. Um, and Seattle plays a lot of zone coverage. Debo crushes zone. We saw that two weeks ago, 7 for 79, plus uh, 15 rushing yards in that game. He was a top 10 wide receiver two weeks ago. On the other side of the ball, the yeah. complete opposite situation, <laughs> like question marks up and down the entire yeah. lineup. You have no certainty at running back. You have no certainty at wide receiver. You know, we are making a decision in one of our leagues, you know, with Tyler Lockett, where it's, okay, we could go Lockett, we could go Dobbs, we could go Gabe Davis, Gabe Davis we could go Gus Bus. None of us said Lockett. That's the tier that Tyler Lockett is in. Whether you and go the tier with goes one of down those, your face. Yes, yeah. because Hearing that is that. that is not what you drafted Tyler Lockett to be. That's not what he's been for the last five years. Um, if you want to start someone in this game, it's obviously it's going to be DK Metcalf. Uh, Metcalf had three touchdowns last week. Was great. He's good enough to beat the Niners. In yeah, you don't general. want to be caught with him on the bench again. No, and, and the Niners on the course of the season, they've shut down running backs, tight ends, quarterbacks, but where they get beat is a, the wide receiver position. So Debo, I think, is a fine play. Tyler Lockett is past his 31st Man. birthday as well. So I do think there's a chance JSN is, um, I guess, really relevant for the fantasy playoffs, but this week it's going to be a tough one. Yeah, he's emerging. 11 targets last week. I believe that was his season high. Wow. Wow. Yeah, Brooks, what did, what did you just say about Lockett? I was just saying, on our start sit tool on the website, he's been in there almost every week as a popular search, but he's not coming up at all this week. Ugh, people, people are benching him. Say people have decided. Yeah, they've they've already yeah. moved on. Um, yeah. We talked about the running backs. You just have to monitor that if you're desperate and one of those two guys is starting, then certainly you have a starter. If both sit down, then DJ Dallas is like the punt of punts this week. Oh, yeah. Like, they punted, and then instead of catching the punt... That guy just punted you, it. You try to kick it back. Ooh, nice. I don't want this. Yeah. <laughs> Return to cinder. That would be awesome. That would be awesome to watch a punter get the ball and just punt it away. Cat, uh, so instead of a fair catch, it's a catch and punt? Yeah. Catch and punt. What is the end result? Is that a fumble? I think uh, that's that would a fumble, be a fumble, right? Yeah. But what, what, if, they, what does the ref do? What if no? I think it's legal, right? Like I don't think that's there'd be a flag on Are the play. Are you allowed to do that? I don't know. I don't for think you sure. can kick the ball unless it's on purpose. <laughs> I'm just saying, like let's say but, you're the Jets and you're like, well, we can't score on offense, but we could score on defense. When you give us the ball, let me try to punt, instant instantly punt it back, play the field position. Gotta game. keep the defense on the field, right? <laughs> keep the def yeah. keep our defense on the keep field. our defense on the field. All right, quick break. Back with another matchup. The Buffalo Bills at 6-6, six and six, desperate times. But at least they get to travel to Arrowhead to play the Chiefs. Oh, man. Who are 8-4, and four, coming off a loss. The DK Sportsbook line, look, Kansas City minus 1.5. Yeah. So, I think in a normal season, you'd be probably looking at them as heavier favorites at home in this one. The over-under is 49 points. This is the lowest over-under ever for a Patrick Mahomes-Josh Allen game. It's still a very good over-under. Like, this isn't necessarily what we've seen um, in the past with monstrous back-and-forth affairs, you know, 38-24, to 42-36, to 36, some of the matchups we've seen them play before. But on the course of this week, when you're targeting your start-sit decisions and the landscape of the rest of the NFL, this is a, this is a game you want pieces in. Yeah, second-highest over-under right now. No questions about the quarterbacks, though. You play Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen? Yep. Yep. Or maybe there are questions on the Mahomes side. No, uh, there. You know, the, I, I think if you've got like Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy and Mahomes, that's a question. But for the most part, Mahomes is going to be in your lineup. Let's turn to the wideouts first here. Stephon Diggs. Of course, you play him. 
I had the privilege of looking up the game log of Gabe Davis this morning, <laughs> who plays every snap of every game. Yeah. His last five games, guys, in our league, 19.2. Yeah, baby. That's awesome. Zero. Go. Oh, that's not. 8.6. I will uh, take that from Zero. Gabe. Oh, man, again. And then 19.5. Red light. <laughs> oh, shoot. So if he is fulfilling the every other goose. <laughs> he can't. He can't. He, I mean, the, if like, he does, he's a legend. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I mean, that is, um, that's arch villain stuff, man. Yeah. That's, uh, you know, everything says he should be involved in this game. I mean, you are, you've got digs that'll be lined up against, uh, their best corner. Yep. You've got two tight end set returning with Dalton Knox, uh, full practice, be back out on the field with Dalton Kincaid. And Gabe Davis just over there hanging out, waiting for the ball. And Gabe Gabe Davis has had big games against the Chiefs in the past. So uh, it's one of those situations <laughs> where, like, I'm putting Gabe Davis in my lineup in League of Record. Yeah, you petitioned us to put in Gabe Davis in our yep. Scotty Fish, which I think Mike and I are on the Romeo Dobbs side right now. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's fine. But I, I, I know it's hard to play Gabe, da Gabe Davis, and there is absolutely a chance you get Jack freaking squat. That's the problem, is it's not... I'm gonna. I might get only six points. It's no. It's I could get zero. It. It's is it a game game, or is it not? Because if it's not, then they just don't. They're not throwing him the ball, or he's not catching it, and he's gonna be basically worthless. So it's a, it's a matchup play. Like in our league of record, I am going up against last week's high scorer of the week. Almost broke the all time record. His team's on fire. Stupid, smelly, ugly, Papa Josh. Mm. Um. His team's just better than mine, and so that's why I'm thro I'm throwing Gabe Davis in there. That's what I meant to do a couple weeks ag uh, ago against you, Andy, when you had the monstrous early performance. If you need that nuclear option, yeah, uh, it is Gabe Davis, and you could you have permission Turn to throw him in your lineup. Turn both keys, yeah, and launch that thing, and maybe it's a dud. It would if you're in an even battle, if you're a favor, that's where you want Gabe Davis on your bench. You j you don't you don't need to have a knife wound on yourself going into a fight mm -hmm. a big favor <laughs> dalton kincaid where are you guys i want to know did i say favor he no, did you, you did. did we just let it go okay. we just let it go <laughs> well we didn't <laughs> um well mike didn't no but me and al were laughing uh i want to know from people that don't have dalton kincaid what you actually expect because it was really really good when dawson knox was out mm -hmm. Uh, he's a rookie tight end. There's been a theme this year. You've seen some contributions from those guys. Obviously, there are every other week you really need him <laughs> when Gabe Davis isn't there. Sure. Mm -hmm. So, what, I mean, how confident would you be if Dalton Kincaid was your only tight end uh, heading into the fantasy playoffs? Uh, I would not be super confident heading into the, the fantasy playoffs. Um, the last six weeks, this week, the, the Chiefs have given up the fewest points of the tight end position. I Would you am, play Najoku this week over him? Asking for a friend. Um, not this week. I think this week the 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 chance that this is a high performing over under. Um, I would stick with Dalton Kincaid this week. I I don't expect him to just be irrelevant. Go down to three targets because Dawson Knox is back. I think he's going to be a five or six target player. And the difference in the type of targets that Dalton Kincaid gets versus David Njoku. David Njoku is going to get, especially in not great weather, David Njoku is going to get targets that are two yards, two yards uh, uh, down the field or two yards behind the line of scrimmage. And Dalton Kincaid will get a couple of relevant targets down the field. Besides bemoaning the Chiefs for not using Rashi Rice more, Mike, what is some actionable advice for the Rice managers this week? Is this a game where you 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 have kind of every week confidence right now to put him in there? Yeah, just just not expecting that I have a wide receiver one, but you know, top twenty four ish. The Drake London against Tampa, or would you roll? Because you like London this week. I do. Too. Um, would you roll Rice? I think I'd go Rice. Yeah, especially with like if Pacheco is out. I agree with what Jason's. I think Jason, you said of. If Pacheco's out, Clyde is not as strong of a runner as Pacheco, and they may have to back off of that strategy. Yeah, I, I am very curious because if McKinnon is, is practicing in full, seems like a, a, a fantastic pickup and play if Isaiah Pacheco is not available. But 
to what degree? Like, you know, the 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 defense has been good here. Is he to the level on the other side of the field of a James Cook or to a Brees Hall who's been struggling and is injured? You know, would you play a Jarek McKinnon if he is active and Pacheco is out or a Brees Hall who's been struggling Oof. bad weather and just been sucking? It's I might play McKinnon there. I think you're still going to get low volume with McKinnon. Uh, try to remember touchdown opportunities. Will yeah, be yeah, yeah, infinitely more. So last year when McKinnon turned into the, I mean, he might be ready to do it again. The dominant playoff run. I guess you know he had a couple games here, fifteen and eighteen opportunities. It's it comes. It's all targets. So if if he's good to go, I guess yeah, I would play McKinnon over those low level options hmm. with Pacheco out. Yeah, he'll get the targets. Travis Kelsey, weeks one through seven, 26% target share, actually above that. The last uh, handful of weeks since week eight, 20% target share. Mm. Crazy stat from Dan Orlovsky, too. When the Chiefs and Bills this year, when they've allowed 20 or fewer points, the Chiefs are 8-0, Bills are 6-0. When allowing 21 or more points, which is not like – that's not that's, extreme that's not for a Mahomes-Allen right. uh, to overcome that. 0-4 oh and 0-6. Oh and like they haven't won the shootout at all. Hmm. Um, but you know Kelsey right now, you you just play him and you hope that you just rotate into a higher usage. Yeah, I mean Kelsey's awesome. I know that Taylor Swift has turned him oh much much weaker. No, um, Boston, <laughs> but he's still Travis Kelsey, and so the, he's not really a question. Anything else from this game you guys want to discuss? I don't think so. Nope. Denver is 6-6, six and six and they travel to Los Angeles to take on the 5-7 and seven Chargers. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Los Angeles minus 2.5. The over-under is 44. Okay, okay. We do not have any word yet that um, the Chargers will have reinforcements. Josh Palmer, his practice window is open, but... I haven't read anything. I've been checking in terms of him being activated and put back out on the field. Chargers talking about rotating the usage of their running backs, trying to get something going on the ground. Josh Kelly has that robust 2.6 yards per yeah, carry. I don't think that rotating is – Maybe you don't so, have somebody that can get it going on the ground. I, I watched the I watched the interview, the press oh, conference. Oh, I bet you did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Huh. And um, it, it wasn't something that Staley brought up, uh, you know, of his own volition. It was like, hey, we're struggling there. We're going to look at making this a competition. The question was asked uh, to him, like, the you know, with the struggles in the running game, should we see more Josh Kelly? And his answer was, you know, well, yeah, it's a, you know, it's a competition. We're always going to self-evaluate, uh, take a look and make sure, you know, that we're getting better. That doesn't mean that the change won't happen, but it – Made me feel a little bit better that it wasn't. Why didn't he say, no, no, Austin's our guy. We're just going to give him the rock. He'll get it going. Uh, but he's been there watching the games too, man. He's, <laughs> he's seen Austin yeah. uh, underperforming. I mean, it doesn't really matter because J Kelly can't get it done. Kelly is not – Joshua Kelly's not better than this version of Austin Eckler. Um, and so it's Is like, Josh Kelly worth picking up? Because I know in, in several of our leagues he's available. Yeah, he's, he's on, on my waiver priority order. Um, currently, because I'm a sad man. <laughs> uh, but this guy's got Josh Kelly. <laughs> hey, everyone, get a load of this guy! Look at this! Look at him! Oh man, <laughs> he's got Josh Kelly in his waiver priority. Ah, uh, yeah, you don't want to be me. Don't <laughs> he's drunk in his Josh chair Kelly. a little bit. Don't pick look up. Look how Josh low Kelly. he is in his chair. Oh, I do think you could. Pick Adjust your chair in orientation to your confidence this weekend to win your matchup and get in the playoffs. <laughs> Unless you're talking about champ, champ, champ. Oh, Most yeah. important yeah. league. Yep. We are going to dominate. Team oh, of man. Is Justin Herbert a problem for fantasy managers into the future here with just, you know, an offense is struggling? Uh, I think you're – uh, the 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 Broncos yeah. defense has been very very good. It, it I've I don't remember actually I do remember one case of this ever. It was with the Chiefs, probably about eight years ago, where the first five games I think they started zero and five, and then all of a sudden this 
horrific defense turned into like the league winning defense. That's what's happened with the Broncos where, you know, they gave up 70 points to the Dolphins and you targeted them like crazy. There was a point in time where I thought, oh, Caleb Williams is going to be just going to Sean Payton and Sean Payton's going to start throwing every game. And instead they turned it around. Their defense has been great. They're in the playoff hunt legitimately. Uh, they have a better record than the home chargers here and the Broncos are going to come to play. So I am not ecstatic about Justin Herbert in this matchup. I'm not crazy about Austin Eckler. Keenan's just been so good and he's the only viable weapon in this offense that obviously you're going to play him and unfortunately you're going to play Austin Eckler. His opportunities have been there. He's still touching the ball a ton. Um, Jordan but, Love or Justin Herbert? That is a great question. Against um, the Giants. Yeah, let me – honestly, I just want to check the weather real quick because if it was clear weather, I would go love. I, I think the answer is love. The, I'm seeing clear weather for the Giant game. It's a huge game. What do you mean? There's a Giant game. Oh. oh okay. Oh, yeah, oh, baby. It's Friday, no, Friday. no, no. No, don't mm it. Yeah, that was a good one. Thank you. <sighs> it's an oversized game. I'll be here all week. <laughs> thank, thank you, everybody. <laughs> Go back down in your chair, Jason. We don't need you. Okay. Up. We don't need I'll, you up. I'll, at the I'll microphone. chime back in later. <laughs> um, man, it's tough. Uh, you know, Keenan Allen. He's a top five fantasy producer this year. You play him. Yeah. Josh Palmer. You're just waiting. And yeah, um, I'd, I mean, even if he's active this week. No, I give him a week. Yes. I agree with that. Unless you're in like crazy desperate. I mean, like I, sure. I legit play Josh Kelly over him if he was active this week. Josh Kelly over Josh, Josh Palmer. Palmer. Yeah, just Oof. just waiting to see what the knee is like and the the snaps. Javante Williams on the other side. Yep. Hubba well, hubba. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> okay. But he, yeah, you can play him. Seventeen opportunities a game. You got a start of the week in this game too. Yeah, I do. I like Cortland Sutton uh, against the Chargers secondary. Six touchdowns in his last seven games. It seems inevitable at this point. But that's really your your you know, and Russell Wilson. I mean, Russell Wilson, I think, is in play this week. It's a good Yeah, you could stream him. Uh streaming situation. And then um that's it. That's it. So Sunday night football, the ten and two, Philadelphia Eagles. Man, this is this is gonna be great. Oh at baby. the nine and three Dallas Cowboys. The DraftKings Sportsbook line, Dallas minus three and a half, the over is under is fifty two and Look, both teams are going to make the playoffs. So it doesn't make sense to call this a must-win game for Dallas, but I feel like it is. I yeah. really do. I feel like it is a must-win game for this team to they they would be they'd have the same record as Philly if they win it. They're favored. They're at home. They're supposed to be able to beat difficult teams and this would be a precedent setter for the playoffs. This is a must-win game for both teams as far as you're playing for the chance at the bye. Uh, that is everything for these teams you're you're playing for a chance for home field through the playoffs um you know there's there's only three teams really in contention the eagles the cowboys and the niners that can get it the eagles control their destiny if they went out you know they've already got the number one they're they're still ahead of the niners despite just losing to the niners but if they lose one more they've now lost the tiebreaker with the niners this game is so incredibly important and the nice thing is Dak has been so on fire that there's it would be impossible for me to not have confidence that he can get it done in this matchup. It, this is the the number one matchup uh, over the last six weeks for quarterbacks. Uh, Andy, congratulations on having that. I don't stat. even need it. This I know week. that's why I'm happy. This, for you week, this week it's but yeah, let's keep it going. Dak and CD fantasy point scorers this year. Number one, CMC. Number two, Tyree Kill. Number three, CD Lamb. So I'm, I'm so happy this is Sunday night football. Not not just because we get to watch it, but because it's not on the slate for DraftKings. <laughs> so just this would be the entire the entire slate would just be this game. Jake Ferguson leads all NFL pass catchers in red zone targets. Somebody that they look to down there, Brandon yep. Cooks. Jason start of the week. He's been uh, very good. Top twenty four in five of seven weeks. Big play guy. Going to have the opportunities against the worst. I mean, they give up forty six and a half points. The Eagles do to wide receivers per game. That is a lot. It's impressive. And you know, twenty five of those are C D Lamb, but the rest have to go somewhere. So So that's what I wanted to bring up. I wanted to bring up Michael Gallup. Michael Gallup last week one target. The week before one target. 
he has not been very good. Now, he is still involved. He is still running routes. He's out there, you know, 46% of the snaps, which is somewhat normal for him. Jalen script- Tolbert, five targets. Jalen Tolbert, three targets. Jalen Tolbert, one target. So would you – I mean, my I point I don't think is, either guy has a shot. I think that there is a world where the third receiving option here matters for fantasy, and the question is just who is it? N- Jake Ferguson. Jake Ferguson. Whew, that'd be nice. I like Jake Ferguson. <laughs> okay. Um, did I hear you stomping your yeah. feet? I was galloping. What he was is stomping. Happening he, today? he is. He is. What's me- happening? It's Friday, Friday. It's like, did I hit the pee wee word of the day? Yeah. He gets it, he gets it in his uh, in his little uh, button thing for one week. Okay. Yeah, you can take it off after today. Jalen Hurts till next Friday. <laughs> DeAndre Swift, AJ Brown, Devontae Smith, and then the Dallas Goddard question: Are you waiting? On Dallas Goddard, the Cowboys are a good matchup, and they could probably use him. But, Mike, you you said yesterday you wanted to talk about Devontae yes. Smith and Dallas Goddard in this game. The floor is yours. Well, I, just, I wanted to bring up where your your uh, your level of concern of Dallas Goddard derailing the the Devonta Smith you know hype train. As last year, when Smith caught fire in the second half of the year and went and was just an incredible league winner league winning type of a player Dallas Goddard was out we had the first nine games of the season where Devonta Smith was averaging 59 yards a game and then the last three without Dallas Goddard he's over a hundred and almost averaging a touchdown a game so like there it's it's now two years in a row that we have seen when they're both on the field Devonta Smith is still good but he doesn't become the electric type of guy that where you're like More I'm variability. I'm, you're like I'm so glad that I have Devonta Smith in my lineup. So are you are you letting that information dictate how you view Smith or even like other options over Smith? Yeah, because six, sixty I, yards, sixty yards a, a a week is not that's not going to get it done. Yeah, I, I I I definitely think it has an effect on him. Um, I'm just not sure that it pushes him to such a different tier that your decisions are going to be different. Um, I've got the data here over the last two years, eight games where Dallas Goddard has not played versus 21 together. Uh, And it's basically 14 PPR points, full PPR for Devonta Smith uh, when he's in 18 points when he's out. So you go from good to great, right? but you're still good when he's been there. Eagles offensive coordinator Brian Johnson came out and talked about the fact that when Dallas Goddard's out, A.J. Brown gets covered, like, double teamed more. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, that makes it's sense. really, like, more tar- – what happens is more targets go to A.J. Brown because coverages change a little bit, not necessarily Goddard filling you, the stat sheet. Do you remember – I don't know. It do was, you uh, remember? Oh, yeah, it was last week uh, when the big hulking wide receiver from Ole Miss uh, played against the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. And just how would he do? He was pretty he, good. Yeah, he did great. The <laughs> big hulking guy from Ole Miss. Oh yeah, there's another big hulking guy from Ole Miss, AJ Brown, who gets yeah. to play Dallas this yeah. week. <laughs> He's gonna be great. Yeah, he always he always sent, seems to be DeAndre Swift. Where you at with DeAndre? They 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 basically, I don't know if you noticed, but they've been struggling to run the football. They haven't tried to run the football a lot. I mean. Six attempts for DeAndre well, Swift last week. Yeah, this he got he also got dinged up. It was against the San Francisco. Oh, 49ers. did he ever? Yeah, and it's I mean fourteen for eighty against Buffalo the week before that. Twelve for seventy six the week no problem. before that. So I yeah, it's maybe maybe you're a little bit shook from Swift, but I'm still putting him in. It is worth noting again, like the 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 Eagles had very little rest last week against the team in the Niners who had a ton of rest, and it's happening in back to back weeks. The, we, we saw them get shellacked by the Niners as well, but Dallas played on Thursday last week, so they've got extra rest coming in while the Eagles are traveling. I, I, I personally really do expect the Cowboys to take care of business here. Tennessee, Miami, Monday Night Football, part of a doubleheader. Yeah, we've got a doubleheader Monday night, which I'm, I, I don't know if, how people feel about you know when they start the season, they've had the back-to-back Monday night games. That doesn't bother me. I'm okay with that. But when we've done these layered... Same exact time. Yeah. Like over this season, we've had one start like 30 minutes later. And that is obnoxious. It's a nuisance. These are at the exact same time. they're the same moment. The exact same time. The NFL 
it must be trying something out. Could they, and I don't understand. Could they swap the Titans with the Packers, and then we don't have to watch the Giants Titans game, and then we can only watch Dolphins. So you like just make the Packers play the Dolphins? Yes, yeah, just yeah, do yeah. like a swap ski, and just give the other two teams L's. No, you can play them, but no one's. I mean, you don't have to watch it. It's oh, a, it's the, oh, it's I the see. Hidden, it's okay. the hidden game. Okay, yeah. Uh, we'll work on that. Tennessee, Miami, Miami, thirteen point home favorites. The over under is forty six. They're eviscerating opponents right now. Tua start of the week. A chan start of the week. Mostert, you play him. Tyreek, you play him. Waddle, you play him. Yep, easy. The end, easy. On the other side, not I mean, easy. Will Levis has been bad. Yeah, you know, he's been Will Levis. Yeah, he's been. He is who we thought he is. Um, Derrick Henry. I mean, Derrick Henry's a little scary in this. Very he scary. is. Um, to my knowledge, there's no snow in Vermont currently coming down this oh, weekend. Crap. But it's do, really a matter of. Do you know how much snow you would need for him to perform? Oh, you need a blizzard against Miami. Yeah, on the road. It, let's say you get down by a lot. That's usually his major kryptonite in in big blowout losses. You're going to see more Tajay Spears, less Derrick Henry. They're not going to be able to run the ball as much in the second half. Uh, he's still Derrick Henry, so he's going to be in your lineup. There's really not compelling advice we can give you to say bench Derrick Henry. I mean, they lost last week, and he still, you know, put up 24 and a half fantasy points and 40 percent of the snaps because he's Derrick Henry, and because there was a lot of snow in Vermont. Um, this week it's going to be tough sledding. I I don't expect a big performance. The Miami defense, though, I do expect a big performance. Oof, Last six weeks, they've been eighth against quarterbacks, first against running backs, seventh against wideouts, and uh, it's going to be really tough. They, the Titans just don't have the personnel to beat them. And Jalen Ramsey will definitely pick off Banana Rama in this game at some point, and it's just a question of and does piss he off DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> does he <laughs> does he house it or not? Uh you know. So do you, I mean DeAndre Hopkins? If you if you have to play him, he's going to get the targets. They're going to be down. They're going to be bad. It's going to be bad, but I mean, like five for 70, no touchdowns. Yeah, it's been a turnaround here. The Dolphins. Six for 60, no touchdowns, probably what you're going to get. Dolphins on the season, 26th. That looks pretty good. You know, I want my wide receivers against that, except the last six weeks, it's been seventh uh, when you're adjusting for schedule. So I'm with you. He's like a wide receiver three type. Would you play, let's go, DeAndre Hopkins or Garrett Wilson? Wilson, oh, that's so tough. I, I I do lean I do lean Wilson there. I worry about the weather, but Gabe Davis. G Gabe is entirely his own decision. It's okay. Gabe versus like <laughs> he's he's Gabe versus thing. Gabe. It's Gabe okay. versus Gabe. It's what does your lineup need? But now, uh, if like, I had those, if you had those two this week, you need the big play. Would you play Hopkins? I think I think I'd play Hopkins. Yeah. Hopkins has. I, I, been, I guess if they were on, if they were both on my line, uh, roster, I would still play Hopkins. Yes. It <sighs> doesn't give you a lot of hope, though. Nope. Hopkins is. What do you think he is on the year? I'm just. This is like. I feel like a good question because wide receiver twenty. Mike, I'll go lower than that. He has. I mean, he's had a couple spike weeks enough to move him up. I'll go give, me, give me the number. Twenty two. Twenty three. Mm. Twenty three. Green Bay six and six taking on the four and eight New York Giants. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Green Bay minus six and a half on the road over under thirty six and a half. Packers in the playoffs right now. The Packers are 16 and 0 in December under Matt LaFleur. 16 and 0. That's incredible. He likes the snow as well. Yeah. And they I mean the Packers look so good right now. I'm yeah. so happy for Packers fans to and so jealous. Did they did they really do it again? They might have. It's just not fair. It's no, it is not fair at all. If if Jordan Love really is a franchise quarterback, it is not fair. Just don't even talk to the Bears fans, because <laughs> the Bear fan, <laughs> the Bears fans can't handle that. Um, Brett? but Jordan loves him. I mean, yeah, Favre to Rogers to potentially love. Wasn't there someone before Favre too? I mean, I uh, was a Brett Star. Star, yeah. So they've just did you say Brett? Bart, Bart, Bart Star. So from well, from Bart, yeah, Bart Star was the OG. Nineteen, two, the ni first two Super Bowls. Yeah, nineteen fifty six. Yeah. So just since 1956, <laughs> they've had a great quarterback. Wait, I mean, there were some quarterbacks between yeah, Star and certainly. Favre that they struggled okay. with. I don't know. Favre played like 30 years. 40. Oh, sorry. Jordan Love, play him. Yes. AJ Dillon's Mike's start of the week. Yeah. 
do, that is do, do monitor terrifying. Uh, oh, I understand, but it's a start of the week, as in not a oh this dude's a top twelve lock. It's a he's been a top twenty four player for three straight weeks. Chilling like a villain. The Giants twenty fourth against running backs on the season, twenty eighth the last six weeks. So, but it's also pay attention to what's going on with Aaron Jones limited on Thursday. On the other side, you play Saquon. Mm -hmm. because you just always do. He gets 23 opportunities a game. And the Packers are not great at stopping the run. They're they're average at best. And then uh, Romeo Dobbs is in play this week with Watson's hamstring injury. Yep. Jaden Reed, I'm more concerned Jason would play Reed over Dobbs. He said that earlier in the week. He's got the chest injury. He'll play. I like the Dobbs side. I think both guys are fair. Dontavian Wick, somebody to pay attention to. Very risky. I wouldn't. I wouldn't play him. There's, like I'd play Hyatt on the other side. I think there are, there are deep leagues where he is playable. I was, you know, I was bummed he, this wasn't on the slate because I wanted to DFS Wicks. Yeah, Wicks seems like a perfect. Yeah. I, I was just wondering. I was like, I just had the mental exercise of Wicks seems like a great yeah. DFS. Oh, he's not on the slate. Uh, some updates for you. Dawson Knox could come off IR for Week 14. We talked about him earlier. He may play this week. Christian Kirk has been put on injured reserve due to the core muscle injury. He's out for four weeks. David Njoku practiced on Friday. I guess okay. he had missed a, a a game due to or practice or missed a practice. Anybody else you want to talk about? Oh, no, no. let's 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 get to it. Yeah. Fantasy Face Off presented by DraftKings. I'll just take this stupid jacket off. Last week, Jason on top. I was the comfortable second, and Mike ended up at the uh, at the bottom of the barrel yet again. Samuel. So we've got uh, <laughs> we've got our lineups to reveal to you this week. But first, wheel of shame. Spin the wheel! Huzzah! got your fingerprints all over it yeah, it does <laughs> uh safety first smurfs up uh, wait dobby oh billy bob oh billy bob oh my billy oh, bob billy is bob this, is this uh silence of the lambs <laughs> this <is> basically <laughs> basically uh is very similar this is just uh okay all right <laughs> yeah, yeah baby. so mike just to describe it at home mike is putting on um is he putting on a shirt or is he taking off a shirt? I think shirt? he's taking off a shirt. It and looks his hair. Oh, oh, baby, nips out for Harambe, baby. And then uh, looking oh. good, Mike. This yeah. is oh, there's more. Yeah, yeah come you get, on. This is all. This is a Mike's got his favorite hat on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> baby. Oh, I got teeth. Yeah, you got to bite into them. Yeah. I got to bite it. Yeah, it's like a molding. This is this was what oh, came today. Yeah. I thought when we ordered it, I thought, it, oh, oh my <laughs> goodness. Yes, baby. What y'all think about? <laughs> You've got to go to YouTube and oh, see this. Oh my if, gosh, this is a top five tighten all that time. Shirt, tighten that shirt. Oh, baby. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looking good. Woo! Oh, let's read these lineups, boys. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Let's go ahead and start with Mike's <laughs> quarterback. To, to, I tell today. you what, <laughs> it's kind of hard look, to talk. I love it. I can't even look it's at a you. Little, little hard to, <laughs> the, the, my teeth, my teeth the, are falling out. The missing tooth is oh, the best part. Oh yeah! All right, I got a bite one. <laughs> They're gonna fall out. Who's your quarterback, I'll Mike? I'll tell you one sec. So uh, I'll put him in when I don't have to talk because they're not gonna stay in my mouth. Uh, when you lose th three in a row, you reach a YOLO point <laughs> in your life. Uh, my quarterback. Will be Baker Mayfield against oh, the Atlanta Falcons oh, at fifty three hundred. Woo! -wee. That's, that's Woo. someone needing Christian McCaffrey in his lineup. Uh, my my uh, my quarterback is Brock Purdy. My start of the week sixty five hundred. You at, would at home <laughs> against Seattle. You, yeah, we're, <laughs> you could have too. Hey, these callers don't run, boys. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Mike. We all have different quarterbacks. I, I went with Russell Wilson. Against the Los Angeles Chargers at fifty eight hundred, so Mike had the uh, the cheapest quarterback. Yep. Jason the most expensive, and I went with Russ, which is crazy because I felt like I was going with a cheap quarterback yeah. at sixty five hundred. So you also must have Christian McCaffrey. We'll find out what running backs do you Speaking guys? Speaking of Christian McCaffrey, yeah, uh, yeah, he's in my lineup. Okay, <laughs> and I can't stop talking. Like this. You don't, and you shouldn't. <laughs> at ninety two hundred, 
<laughs> at home, this is the best. At home against the Seahawks. Uh, then I also have <laughs> Alvin Kamara. What? At 8,200. You have CMC. At home against the Carolina Panthers. Well, let me just jump in here because I got Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara. Oh, Yeehaw, folks. Wow. I got them both. <laughs> wow. Give me some of them teeth. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, well. <laughs> Who are your stupid running backs? My stupid running backs are Alvin Kamara. I've got at least half of them. And Joseph Mixon at no, home that against, ain't CMC. against the Colts. You mean the number one running back who outscored CMC last week? Um, oh, he'll definitely do it again. <laughs> <laughs> He's 6,100. Good value in my lineup. All right, Mike. We need three wide receivers. All right. I got Baker Mayfield. <laughs> so... I definitely have Mr. Michael Evans first <laughs> How at, did you fool at 7,700. Whoa. That I, means these next two guys are cheap. No. I got DJ Moore. Okay. What did, did you At mean? home. Just wait. <laughs> at 6,500. And then Drake London at 4,600. Wow. I, I, I feel like you've got more money than me. Um, uh, you won't think that in a moment. <laughs> okay. All right, uh, let's see here. My wide receivers, I've got Drake London with you at 4,600. He's seemingly yeah. like a cash lock. Um, I have Debo Samuel at 6,800 to stack with my Brock Purdy, uh, playing against that zone coverage against Seattle. And at 5,400, I'm going with Rushy Rice. Mm. Uh, hopefully he uh, gets it done this week. We are, we are pretty live this week. Uh, my... Wide receivers, DJ Moore. So we do share okay. DJ Moore at right. 6,500. The stack with Russell Wilson, I'm going with Cortland Sutton at 6,100. Oh, yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. And then my cheapy here, uh, my bargain, my seven target bargain, Xavier Gibson. Oh. Who's playing 70 plus percent of the snaps for the Jets last week, six for 77. Very involved. They've said goodbye to Alan Lazard, and uh, Gibson's sure. getting the opportunity. He's only 3,100. So he was basically a freebie. All right, my final three. By the way, I I have a hundred dollars left over. <laughs> okay. But here we go. At tight end, Tanner Hudson of the Cincinnati Bengals. Okay. Oh boy! At twenty eight hundred. At flex, Parker Washington oh. of the Jacksonville Jaguars, who will be filling in for the now out Christian Kirk. He's only three thousand. And then the Kansas City Chiefs against, against Buffalo. Against Buffalo, they are at home though. Twenty six hundred. Top heavy, anyone? Okay, uh, I have yeah, yeah. at tight end. I've got Gerald Everett going against that Vance Joseph Denver defense mm. at thirty four hundred. Feeling himself. <laughs> um, I've got the Browns defense at three thousand. I think they're probably the best price play this week at home bad weather i couldn't afford them. <laughs> That's how fantastic. much was your uh, who was your tight end and my my tight end was gerald everett at 3400 okay. okay. i could have spent a hundred dollars more and gone to isaiah likely i chose ever over likely and Ooh. interesting and i uh it's just because of the weather of the weather yeah and um Coward. at flex i've got an actual player zach moss my dude uh he disappointed last week but against cincinnati he should be good this week all right, my uh, my defense is the Browns. I agree with you. Best priced defense of the week, three thousand. My tight end is Brevin Almighty. Yeah, mm -hmm. Brevin Jordan, thirty one hundred. Uh, yeah, he makes fun of us last week. <laughs> yeah, and I now did. he's all in. Now I'm chasing it. I feel like I have to talk like Mike. <laughs> That's how I hear it. My <laughs> flex is forty nine hundred. It's Keaton Mitchell, Baltimore uh, running back at forty nine hundred. Keaton Mitchell should be a pretty fun week. We got a lot of different players. We'll see if we can get Mike and some teeth again next week Can't that was wait <laughs> <laughs> this is um he looks special yeah straight out look, of cars look real good um who was that mater yeah yeah you're mater um, i'm ready for the backup yeah that was <laughs> fantasy straight face off video presented by DraftKings sportsbook download the DraftKings sportsbook app right now use the promo code ballers to get 150 dollars in bonus bets instantly when you place a five dollar bet on any football game that is the code BALLERS, only at DraftKings Sportsbook. That'll do it for today's episode of the show. Shout out to the Deucers and Deucers Alley for recording this fun episode where Mike looks so beautiful. Sunday Live, Mike without the teeth. BallersLive.com. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. 
and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. <laughs>